Hello all. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to calculate present value. And if you have present value of costs and present value of revenue, you could calculate net present value using Excel. So in our example, we have an initial investment of $1 million, annual cost of 100,000, revenues starting in year two of 250,000, so over 10 years, your interest rate is 2.5%. So you could make columns of your costs here. So you have your initial investment, your costs, your revenue. You can sum those up. And then you can discount each of those values to the present. So for each of these values, you're going to say equals the amount divided by 1 plus the interest rate. And I don't want to write 1.025 because if I want to change the interest rate, I want to be able to just change that one cell and change all my values here. And then you're going to say to the, the year. So in this first year, we're just going to end up with $1 million because we're dividing by 1 plus r to the n. The n is 0. Anything to the 0 is just 1. But I want to be able to drag that cell down. And I want to make sure I freeze this little D6 because I'm I want to freeze that interest rate cell. So I'm going to use function F4. So now I can drag that down all the way and get the present value for each of these years net values. And then I can just sum that up. Equals sum. Oops. And we get 68 thousand dollars. Okay. Another way I could do this, given that the payment is the same every single year, is I can just use <coughs> this Excel tool, PV, and it says what's the rate, what's my number of periods, and what's my payment. Now this, for my cost, my costs are this much. But it, for some reason, the PV looks at costs as if it's positive, it's going to make it negative. So I'm going to put a little negative sign in front of this as my payment so I can get a negative value here. So those are my annual costs. But I have to remember that I also have my initial costs. So I'm also going to add to this my initial costs. So those are my total costs. I can do the same thing. I have a series of payments for my revenue of 250,000 equals PV. Here's my rate, my number of periods, and then this payment. And again, I'm going to put a negative in front of it because that my payments are actually going to end up being a positive number. Now these are my payments, but my revenue is starting year two. So I need to subtract off of here the first year of revenue. So that has to be discounted to the present. So my revenue starting year two is going to be this amount divided by one plus the interest rate to the one. So I don't need to write it to the one. Okay, so that's my total revenues. So my net present value is going to be the sum of these for this plus this amount. Okay. And a final way I could do this is using the NPV function. So in the first case, I was just, I'm just going to have it be the 100,000. But the NPV functions as taking a stream of numbers and telling you the present value starting with year one. So I'm going to say equals NPV. And I'm going to put in my rate, 25%, 2.5%. And then my string of values starting at year one. I'm going to do the same thing for my string of values starting at my, my revenues, NPV, my rate, my values starting at year one. So I have to include that zero in there. And then I can sum up this whole thing. So I'm going to say equals this plus this plus this. And in every case, I get 68000 907. Now I could change this interest rate and they would all change. Okay. 
Let me show you one more thing about this NPV function. The NPV function is really convenient when you don't have the same payment every time. When you do, you can use this PV, because the payment's the same every year. But NPV you can use when your payment is different each year. So for example, what if this is your string of payments? You can say equals NPV, my interest rate, 10%, and then my string of payments starting year one. So it gives me that what those payments are worth in year zero, but my payments are starting year one. If you have different dates for when these occur, so this is XNPV, you can use XNPV, your rate, your values, and then your dates. So this is going to be, I have zero at that first date. And that means I'm going to get the present value for 1116. Okay, that's everything. I hope that was useful. So long.